Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my Human Guide. So humans are one of the two starting teams in the Blood Bowl 2016 box set along with Orcs. And I think they're great for learning the rules of Blood Bowl, you know, um, such as like the blocking mechanics, what have you, the skills, sure hands, pass, catch, dodge, block, big guy. I think they're great for getting to grips with Blood Bowl, but I wouldn't say they're a, a good choice for beginners, um, purely because I find them so weak. Um, you know, especially with Blood Bowl 2, you compare them to the other races. Even when you compare them to the, the current plastic teams that are out at the moment, you know, Orcs, Skaven, Humans are way behind those two. Um, they just they just don't really have the power that other teams have. But they are good for, you know, getting a handle on the mechanics. That, that That's really all they're good for. I would recommend new players use Orcs or Dark Elves or Undead, really. Um, I I would I would stay away from humans as a beginner, apart from simply, you know, to use the teams in the box to get a grip of the mechanics. They 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 are good for learning mechanics. That's about the extent of their stuff for, for starting players. But of course, if you like them and you want to give them a go, he, he, you've come to the right place. So um, let's see what Sinai says. Can adapt their style to their opponent's weaknesses. This isn't really true. Their style is a bash team. However. They're a weak bash team because they've only got strength three apart from their big guy. So teams like Orcs will just push them into playing against their opponent's you know, strength. They're, they're not adapting their style. Their, their style is being forced to change by their opponent. Um, they're okay at beating up Elves and Skaven. So so they you know they just stay where they are there. That, that's their natural thing. They're taking guard, they're taking mighty blow, and they're just trying to hurt people basically like every other bash team. Um so you know they can they can actually put a hurt on the the elf teams and the skaven teams but not really against orcs and dwarves that, those kinds of teams they're just getting outbashed and you've got to use your speed somehow which next strength movement above average but it's hard to utilize that because you don't have the agility um easy to play wouldn't go that far but hard to master definitely strength based on their skills rather than their stats that's not really a weakness it's a weakness at a high tv where Base stats become so much more important. Base stats and skill access are the two defining characteristics of high TV play. You have stuff like gutter runners that are movement 9 and agility 4, which can become movement 10 with sprint sure feet, scoring one turn. You've got L's, which are you know agility 4 across the board, with agility access, they're blodged up across the board. You've got chaos and nurgle that have got claw access across the board and strength access across the board, nearly. Orcs and Dwarves. See, the Dwarves fall away at high TV because they don't have the strength stat. Although they've got great access, they fall away. So humans don't even have the access that Dwarves have. So they really do fall away at high TV. It's a, it's a high TV weakness, but a low TV strength because, you know, you, you want a lot of skills. They've got four block, which is good at low TV. Um, cannot perform extremely well in one style of play. Yeah. That's basically it, yeah. You know, they, they've got their niche, which is the, the same as Norse and um, Norse and Bretonians, really, is just beating up elves and Skaven. And um, and even then, it's not that big an advantage. You just get to beat them up. You don't get to win particularly a big amount against them, but you do get to play your proper game. Um, so then you've got the different kinds of um, formats of Blood Bowl. You've got NAF style, tabletop tournaments, um you know res all this kind of stuff five or six skills they're pretty good for that because they start with a lot of skills they get to then therefore skill stack a little bit don't they block got four guard probably and uh, maybe block on the ogre if the format allows it block on a thrower counter war dances a little bit so you know they, they've got some decent tools for for naf style tabletop tournaments though they're still distinctly average in those um matchmaking like you know champion ladder or whatever they really want to min max a little bit because they you know they're better at low TVs. They don't really want to go high because they don't have the base stats. In like perpetual leagues, um like you know, tabletop leagues or OCC or whatever, things where you're just playing like a proper league, they're pretty decent. They're kind of decent at first, but again, other teams are gonna pull away, you know, when when the dark elves are are, you know, all blodged up, when you scaven have one turners and claws 
then humans really start to look terrible and they've just got to survive by using dirty player and or just getting lucky against orcs and dwarves i mean i just don't understand if you take something like an 1800 humans against 1800 dwarves or orcs i just don't know what the humans are meant to do so so i i would definitely you know if you're playing them keep keep their tv somewhat trim because um otherwise they're going to get banged on all right so let's make a let's make a little team here so we can see the players So, the big guy is the ogre, which is pretty cool. He's a pretty decent big guy. In Blood Bowl 2, he's 130k. In Blood Bowl 2016, he's 140k. So, that's a nice little saving there. And I think it's fair. He's got bonehead, so on a 1, he loses his tackle zones whenever he does something. But, you know, it's 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 one of the better nega traits for big guys. It's not, it's not too damaging. You don't have to blitz with him and stuff like you do with a Minotaur. Loner, of course, because he's a big guy, which is pretty terrible, you know, like... He's unreliable. Um, throw teammate is only used if you have the star player Puggy Bacon Breath, um, which isn't on Cyanide, I believe. Thick Skull is pretty actually surprisingly good because you really don't want to lose him for a drive, um, and that you know. So in many ways, it's better than regeneration for winning games. Um, Mighty Blow, you know, obviously standard. He's he's in there to get a bit of strength on your team because everyone else is strength three or two. And he's got Mighty Blow for three dice. Mighty Blow hits at low TV. He's only got Strength Access. So you're talking Guard first, 100%. Stand for Doubles, he, excuse me. Doubles, he wants um, Block and Dodge. Definitely, the first two skills, in my opinion. Which then, if you've got Block and Dodge, Break Tackle becomes a much better option. You can also take Pro and Tackle um, down the line, you know. Um, he's, a pre he's a pretty decent big guy. If you're all double six for Strength, I don't know if you'd take it. You might go Block. You might take the strength. That's always up to the individual. Tough choice. I would never take movement or agility or armor on on a human ogre. A bit different with a an ogre on an ogre team. You might want an agility three ogre, but um, not not for humans. Blitzers are the stars of the team here. And again, you see now this is this is the problem with this base stats, right? They're paying ninety thousand for seven three three eight block. Dark Elves play 100,000 for 7348 block, which is just, you know, it's it's outrageous, isn't it? It's a saving of 30,000 and a skill. Um, however, they do have strength. So that's their strength is their strength access. They get four guard guys pretty early. They get mighty blow on them. They get piling on in Blood Bowl 2. You can never take it on tabletop, so remember that in future. All my guides, whenever I mention piling on, it's only for cyanide. Um, tackle. You want you want to have a frenzy guy, um, definitely. You could take Juggernaut on him too. You probably want strength on your frenzy guy. I like. I would. I would think. I would definitely take agility. To be honest, I would think about movement. It's. It could be. It could be useful. You'd rather more want the movement if you already had agility or dodge. Doubles. All doubles are dodge for me. It's just too powerful. Block and dodge. You could maybe take diving to um, jump up if you already had piling on, and. Yeah, I, th I would I would like the strength guy, one guy to get strength and then build him as the frenzier, just because you can get into trouble with strength three frenzy. But if you don't get that, then you've probably still got to have a strength three frenzier, just because frenzy is so powerful. So yeah, there you go, guard, mighty blow, tackle, piling on, frenzy juggernaut. I mean, you can and then doubles doubles go dodge. You could take um, you could take stand firm, but I think it's so far down the line. You know, I don't plan on getting going to legend with players i just want to go take the most relevant skill at all points which is usually guard mighty blow piling on tackle you know that kind of thing you could go mighty blow tackle on one guy mighty blow piling on one guy guard first on two i i generally go guard first on three the first guy gets guard because you you've got your ogre to blitz with mighty blow if you if you really want to blitz with mighty blow i just find humans need guard so much that i go guard first on at least the first three Maybe the first four blitz, like all four blitzers will just go guard first. It's so important. Right, the thrower, he's a decent player. He makes the orc thrower look feel really, really bad, doesn't he? 70k for 6338 sure hands is already absolutely fine. And then he gets pass thrown in as a little extra and passing access. So he's pretty decent, you know. Again, he's going to go block on normals. He's going to go dodge on doubles and guard as well. But I would go dodge first just because he's going to be handling the ball. Um block leader maybe if you if you like if you want a leader probably want a leader on him kickoff return is decent for him 
tackle, so, you know, so he can be a bit of a sweeper. Um, a lot of people like accurate on him. I don't really like accurate because maybe he's a later skill just because I think you're not planning to pass on him with him. So, And even if he does have accurate and he passes on a 2 plus or a 3 plus, it's still something that could go wrong. I'd rather just run it in with him and, you know, use, use his other skills like such as blodge. And, um, you know, he, obviously he wants any stat, movement, strength, or agility are all amazing on him. Not not armor, though, of course. Um, so, yeah, that's, there's your thrower. Pretty, pretty good player. But, again, I, I'd only usually go one thrower because two is redundant in a bad way. Um, so you've got the catchers. Now, on Cyanide, these guys are 70k, 8238, dodge catch. On Blood Bowl 2016, they're 8237, dodge catch, and only 60k. I actually prefer the armor 7 because it fits with what the models look like. This guy doesn't look as well armored as a blitzer, so I think it's stupid that he's armor 8. I don't like that, but mechanically, I prefer the armor 8 because they're not terrible players. <laughs> um, he's got general and agility, so you're talking block sidestep as his first two skills. Um, after that, they start losing value, really. You could maybe take diving tackle. Or Dauntless to try and do hero plays, but mostly they just want block and sidestep. You could even take sure hands on them and get rid of your thrower then and just carry with a catcher straight off. Doubles wise, they want guard, um, and that's basically it. Stats wise, they want movement massively, they want strength, makes them really good players, and they want agility massively. Um, you know, really, they're only there as a scoring threat for like desperation plays. Or as for one turning attempts, because you know they do have dodge and movement eight, so they're they're, they're pretty decent for one turn threats, one turn touchdowns, um, which I'll be doing a guide on them shortly. Um, and then you've got the lineman. This is why you don't really want two throwers because your lineman can carry nearly as well as your throwers. Six three three eight is for fifty k is fine. I, I do prefer the orc stat line of five three three nine, but this isn't bad. You know, it does it does the job. You can take block on some of them. You already start with four block though, so I'd I'd more likely go wrestle. The reason to go block with these guys is if they roll a double, they want guard 100%, not dodge. Um, but dodge eventually. But yeah, just block guard. If you roll a second skill after block, maybe fend because they're going to go on the line and get punched a lot. And you're going to want a couple of dirty players at some point as well. So you know, some you'll some will just go dirty player first skill. Um, so right now we can have a look at the two builds. So the first one's the standard human build here. This is going to be the same cost in in Blood Bowl Two or Blood Bowl Twenty Sixteen because um, the cost of the catcher is offset by the cost of the ogre. You've got three re rolls. You've got twenty k in the bank, so you can buy an apothecary after your first game, probably. Only eleven players, but you pack in all the power you can, and you need power as humans because humans are just lack it you know you've got four block which is good pretty fast with a movement seven a throw it to pick it up and score with maybe he'll make a handoff to blitzers if you get in dominant positions because you want the star player points on your blitzers rather than your thrower or your catcher the catcher's there as an outlet um you know uh, you can have him you can run him out as a deep threat sometimes and then people will will divert resources to him wrongly or rightly either way it's it's you know he's, he's he can do a job and of course one turning threat and then I, I prefer starting with 11 players rather than 12 purely because if somebody dies in the first game you just get a journeyman whereas if you start with a 12 a 12th human you know who do you just who cares who cares if he dies and you're down to 11 i'd rather just have a journeyman and, and start with a bit more power and in this case three rerolls is all you'll ever need after the first game you hopefully get your apothecary and then after that you start adding linemen and you know depending on your tv you want some reserves because you know it's going to get painful against the bash teams and you can foul against the weak teams and uh yeah i think that's a pretty decent i think that's a pretty decent rounded team it's it's certainly um it's certain they certainly struggle though against good teams and then this is the team that i used on fumble um which is more of a min maxi build for like um perpetual matchmaking this used to start with your entire team finished three rerolls an apothecary 12 players four blitzers throw in a catcher and then you know so you don't buy any per you don't make any purchases ever all your additional tv is coming in obviously the fan factor you can't avoid adding to it but it's coming on your blitzers with mighty blow piling on guard your thrower can get block and leader 
if you, he gets leader, you sack a reroll, and then your catcher can get block and sidestep. Recycle a catcher for try to get plus movement on him to make a better one turning threat. And um, that is my guide for humans, pretty much. I mean, I don't think it's a great build for min maxing, but I think you know it worked for me. I got a pretty decent record with him on fumble. Um, but I, I I would recommend you know if you if you're using them in a NAF style tabletop event. You get the additional apothecary and a thrower here, probably, or a lineman and, and a two fan factor. So, so the NAF style becomes very well rounded actually with the extra with the extra money they get, and you know leagues and and really you could start off in matchmaking with the ogre and then sack him later when he got too much TV. That ten, tends to be what I do with Nurgle because Nurgle are worse than humans, but Nurgle start off with a big guy which gives them a bit of a crutch through the to power them through the early game and then once you don't need that crutch anymore you can sack him and become more tv efficient so there you go hopefully that was helpful so one of the best things about humans is the star player access now they've got morgan thorg like every team has nearly apart from the undead teams and he's okay you know he's, he's really expensive he's kind of okay if you end up a lot of tv down against something like orcs or lizard men that can't, he, you know, he can he can um, tie up multiple strength four players. That's his niche, really. That don't have claw, so he gets to use his armor ten and his strength six. And you know, maybe if you're playing elves that don't have strip ball, you could carry with him because he's strength six and basically impossible to get the ball off. And he's agility three, and um, he does have throw teammate, which unfortunately Sinai don't have. Um, Puggy Bacon Breath on Blood Bowl 2. You could get the combo of Morgan Thorg and Puggy Bacon Breath to have a throw teammate chance. Um, but yeah, he, he is unfortunately not in not in Blood Bowl 2, Puggy Bacon Breath. Maybe he'll come out when halflings are released. Um they've got they've got Mighty Zug. He's pretty decent actually for 260k. 260k is the kind of the kind of TD, TV difference where He's maybe better than like a wizard and an apo, or a wizard and two babes, or something like that. It, you know, two two forty is Wilhelm Cheney, who's basically the best star. Silly Billy for lizard men is about two fifty. Um, Glad Smash Rib is about two fifty for Skaven. So he's he's a, he's nicely he's in a he's in a very nice range for price. The only thing is, he isn't that good. You know, like he is basically what a black orc with plus strength block and mighty blow, which um. Which, if you were to buy him, would be like 170. Um, but I mean, it's it's really useful, especially on a human team. You know, strength five block mighty blow is really, really good. But the jewel in the crown for humans is Griff Oberwald. And now, amazingly, in the previous edition, he was even better than this. Um, you know, he used to be movement eight, and he used to have um, leap. And now he doesn't. He doesn't have leap. He is he has replaced leap with fend because he's got older. And he's he's more survivable, so he's movement seven. But actually, the fend is is good on good players. It's it's pretty bad on like Bretonian peasants. But when you've got a guy who's movement seven, strength four, agility four, armor eight, with blodge, block and dodge, and he's got sprint and sure feet, the fend actually keeps him alive. It's like it's good. It stops people frenzying him. And what's going to happen is you know he's three twenty, which is quite expensive, but. You know, if you're 500 TV down and you get Griffin a wizard, you've actually got a chance, which is crazy. And he's the sort of guy where he's only a little bit more expensive than Zug. If you can possibly top up to get Griff instead of Zug, I would say Griff is definitely better than like a wizard and 170 k of other inducements. He's he's absolutely fantastic in the right matchup. He's obviously not so good against people with a lot of tackle or whatever. But um, I've I've messed up against him before. I've tried to frenzy him with a witch elf and then he's fended me. And he's he's just he's just a very 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 powerful player. Um, basically, arguably the best star player in the game. Actually, when you think about how, you know, like I think Cheney's the best value, and but I think Griff, you know, he can have a bigger impact than Morgan Thorg even. Anyone, I mean, the fact he's bringing agility for, he's got blocks. So what he's making his loner blocks with block. He's making his loner dodges with dodge, and he's making his loner go for it with sure feet. So he's basically he's as reliable a star player as you're going to get, and he is. He is really fantastic. Um, so there you go, and um, that, that's basically the human guide. I think that I think they're a pretty cool team. They they do have a niche, you know. You can't expect all the teams to be um, on the same power level. So I think it's good that they're a bit of a bit more challenging, and they, they do bring thing you know unique things. They've got a lot of skills. They they're good for learning the game. 
um, learning the rules of the game. And uh, yeah, they're, they're a cool team. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.